Okay, we're back for some more Hidarashi. Um, sorry for missing my my minimum once a week quota. <laughs> I was slacking, so this week I'll probably upload two videos. Um, so that try to make up for it, but um, it's getting pretty exciting. Last episode or last session, Keiichi um. Keiichi got inspiration from his mom's knowledge of, or her opinion of what a perfect crime would be. So, let's see if he actually commits it. I mean, there's a lot of different outcomes that can happen. Um, let's say if he does do it, like, how will Satoko react? I think how Mion would react would also be pretty big, because, sure... The Sonozaki's own the place and maybe they're killing people, but they probably don't want other people killing people without their, like, permission, so that could be a negative. I think even if Keiichi does make a really perfect crime, or even if he has mistakes, Uishi would be investigating it anyways because he was already investigating, um, the uncle beforehand. So, it's pretty much, like, impossible, it's impossible to get the goal of making him disappear and no one investigating because Uishi is currently investigating him anyways, but let's see if Keiichi can do it smoothly. I believe in Keiichi. He's really, he really seems like he's steeled himself, but it's always harder when you actually get down to it, right? Well, let's get started. Outside, it was still early enough for the cicadas to be trying. Early afternoon. Evening was still a long way off. I looked at the sky. At some point, it had gotten cloudy. What is this song? Is this new? Didn't so. Kinda did it. <laughs> Come to think of it, as I left the house, I heard on the TV that the weather forecast was calling for a chance of rain on Sunday. The sky was the color of lead. Mm. If I heard a little bit of thunder, I definitely have expected a sudden evening shower. My first destination was school. Before explaining why I was going there, I needed to explain what method for killing that man I had decided upon. Okay, I'm excited. Let's hear it, Keiichi. Transcended Keiichi. I decided that the most suitable death, the one I needed to give him, was the same as last year's curse with a metal baseball bat. Okay. Kind of what I was thinking of, or kind of obvious he was gonna go with a baseball bat. I'm more interested in what he plans to do after he kills him. The same as the punishment their aunt had received, being beaten to death. Wouldn't beating him to death be somewhat unreliable? You may think that stabbing him with a blade would be more reliable. Not necessarily. But this was something I had chosen after a lot of thought. You just need to think realistically. The law, it's prohibited carrying any blades longer than 10 centimeters, I think. So blades available to me, though long enough, were limited to things shorter than a ruler. 10 centimeters, yeah. Well, that's like a third of a ruler. You can probably understand how tricky it would be with such a short reach to go up against an opponent that might fight back. I mean, you're not gonna, like, walk up to him and beat him up, right? You'd probably, like, try to sneak in and stab him. But to be fair, if you remember back to, um, Onokakushi, when Keiichi did pretty well against two guys, obviously he lost at the end, but he was, he was fighting pretty well. With his baseball bat, so maybe he, maybe he's a better fighter than I'm giving him credit for. <laughs> this this music choice is so odd, but I I like it. <laughs> In that case, using a weapon with reach would be far more effective. It might not have the same precision, but you need to just hit the guy until you kill him. Both options resulted in death. With that said, out what is the weapon? with the most terrifying force behind it that is easy to carry around. By this point, you should immediately think of a metal baseball bat. Yeah? I think it's probably... 
trying to think if there's something better, but the good thing is, if you have the metal bat, it's not even suspicious for a kid to be carrying that around. So that's his cover to you. Not that he really wants to be seen, but just in case. I don't need to explain how terrifying a metal baseball bat can be as a weapon. Of special note is the fact that you can carry one around in broad daylight and not be thought of as suspicious. Exactly. Just those two points would have been enough to choose a metal bat for my weapon. But there's one more reason for choosing a metal bat in particular. I will speak about it later. After school, that Sunday, my classmates were still having fun playing in the schoolyard. I could show up there and it would be the same as always, so nobody will think I'm suspicious. Getting my hands on the weapon without looking suspicious was actually a factor I couldn't ignore. I didn't normally play baseball, so if I went to the sports store looking for a metal bat, it would definitely be suspicious and obviously he's gonna end up getting Satoshi's bat to kill him. <laughs> Fits perfectly. I can't even... I can't let there be a beginning to the story, so I need to be really careful even about that. That left school. At a location at which my appearance wouldn't be suspicious, I would acquire the weapon. I checked the inside of the classroom through the window, but of course there is nobody there. The only students who would stay in there were me and the others when doing club activities. Without us, the classroom after school was just an empty, unused room. Without glancing around nervously as... Without glancing around nervously, as if I'd just gone to get something I'd forgotten, I casually went in the entrance. It looked like the teacher was busy with paperwork in the teacher's lounge. I didn't see her in the hallway. Naturally, yet quickly, as a shadow, I entered the classroom. The empty room was full of a strange, stagnant air that you couldn't feel normally. An empty classroom, with nobody here. Maybe while no one was around, the dust creep about on their own accord, licking the floors clean of dirt. I like that sentence. Never heard that before. That's kind of cool. If I suddenly stepped into a place like that, would the dust in surprise fly at me, crush my bones, and eat me alive? <laughs> Good imagination. I felt regret at wasting valuable thinking time on stupid delusions. The students' lockers were lined up in the back of the classroom. The one I was looking for wasn't my own. It was a forbidden locker, one I accidentally discovered one day. Okay. So last time in Anatakushi, when he got the bat, he didn't realize it was Satoshi's. But this time he knows he's getting Satoshi's bat. If one person has one locker, then why would only Satoto have two? I'd made a fuss about it once. After that, I learned it was Satoshi's locker, and he had the same last name as her. But of course, even though it was a locker for a student no longer here, looking inside it was still a shameless act. But one time, I let my curiosity get the better of me and took a peek inside. Inside, it was an average, it was average and worthless. At the time, I hadn't been interested, so now, until now, I had forgotten what had been in it. Well, it's definitely gonna be awkward if, um... Okay, Aiden, don't play with... <laughs> don't play with plastic. I don't know if you watched the movie discussion thing, but I was playing with plastic and it was like the most annoying thing. <laughs> so, I, I I learned, I learned. Okay, but, um... Sato if Satoto does somehow witness it, seeing Kichi with uh, Satoshi's bat in her current mental state, Cause she was kind of fine with it in Anatakushi, but like right now, it, it's probably not the best, <laughs> the best outcome from that. <laughs> but now that I had, dare I say, awakened, oh, uh, it's still kind of cringy, <laughs> but it's cool, I guess. Damn. If he said transcended, I probably would have lost it. <laughs> but he's awakened. I remembered the thing that had been there. Scrape? I opened the locker, and 
A stench of mold and sweat wafted out like a gym storehouse that hadn't been cleaned in weeks. My fa- I wonder why they haven't cleaned it up. I guess it's only been a year, so... Mm. My face puttered up at the stench, but I looked for it. Yes. Satoshi was on the coach's baseball team. I guess that's another good thing to note that now we know, um... We knew he was on the baseball team. But we didn't know... And we kind of knew that baseball was suspicious, but at the time of Anutakushi's, like, theories, we didn't know... The coach was, you know, part of the clinic, so he's obviously, so that adds more suspicion to it. Good to know. And, yo, I messed up. Inside the locker was a Hini Mizawa fighter's uniform, and it, and it, the one Satoshi used, the metal bat. Yes. This was the reason I wanted to choose this bat. This murder would be carried out by me, but this wasn't originally my role. It was Satoshi's. But I would stand in for him and call myself Satoko's Nini. It was one of the rules for standing in for him. I reached for the metal bat and grasped it firmly. It was light. And yet, the tip of it had enough heft in it. Enough to easily imagine the horror if I brought it down with all my might. Satoshi, I'll give you one last chance to save your sister. Lend me your strength. You're a coward, but I will stand in for you. So if you still even care even a little bit about her, you will lend me your strength. I was trying to comment, like, if Keiichi doesn't have, like, a slight suspicion that maybe Keiichi is the one who killed the ant, but I guess he wouldn't if the people have been saying it's proven that some random... Some random guy killed her. There's no more suitable weapon in the world for putting that man to death than your bat. Now, I just need to figure out where to hide it. Tomorrow, before the act, I would just stop by the stool and grab it. Because I couldn't ignore the possibility someone would see me bringing it home and think it was strange. But if I left it here, then there wouldn't be a problem. Plus, tomorrow was Sunday. Not only that, it was the biggest it was the day of the biggest festival in the whole village. Nobody will be coming to stroll. Hopefully. I left out the entrance and went over to the construction vehicle park nearby. We'd been warned by our teacher not to touch it f- just for laughs, so none of the kids would come near the vehicle either. They wouldn't, because if she found out they touched it they'd be in huge trouble. I quietly hid it, in the shadow of the vehicle. Okay, just did get it out of the classroom just in case someone's actually in there. The chances of someone operating the vehicle tomorrow were slim to numb. none. Because tomorrow was Sunday and the giant festivals. Government workers had the day off. Official day off. Yeah, I guess it's about that time. They don't still have it, I'm guessing. I think in Canada we used to have Sundays off too. A while back. And from what my classroom classmates had said, the thing had been left here for years now. Machines that haven't moved in years, you can't just suddenly start them up again. So I was almost definitely fine in this case. Almost. Definitely. (laughs) The sunlight was piercingly hot, my head grew faint for a moment. Had the heat been this harsh for the entire day. A moment dulled thoughts like this was a moment of carelessness. I gave myself a couple hits in the head, then looked around warily. Okay. Next, how to dispose of the torques. Hit me with the Keiichi. Don't chapter end here. No, that's definitely a chapter break. So I guess next session we'll get into the murder. I mean, I feel like... For the past couple of sessions, I'm like, next one's the Watan Adashi, but it never is. But next, next chapter has to be it. Because it's literally the next day, right? <laughs> Disposing of the corpse. The ultimate way not to create a beginning was to not let the corpse be found. It was even more important than killing them. I agree with that part. Thinking on it vaguely, the first thing that came to mind was the swamp. 
Ani da Fuchi, the dreadful bottomless swamp, revered even now, that appeared in the legends of Ani da Fuchi village. So he knows the history of that. Because last time he learned that from Tanato. Tanaka? Is that her name? <laughs> it sounds weird when I say it, but I think it is. Um, during the watch in Agashi, so wait, when did he learn this part? I wonder. Maybe he's just been researching about where to dispose of bodies for his plan. Yes, the swamp called Ani Dofuchi was here first, and then the village took its name to become Ani Dofuchi Village. In other words, this swamp was the origin of Ani Dofuchi Village. No one, no matter who it was, would float back to the surface of this bottomless swamp. Everyone would be swallowed down into the land of the demons below the earth. That's how the stories went. If I was trying to copy Oyashiro Samus then I felt that theory demanded I discard the remains and the weapon into the swamp. But they have said they may have said it's bottomless, but I didn't actually know. And people say large creatures like human produce a lot of gas when they rot, granting a lot of buoyancy. And we know um via Her name's not Tanako, is it? Takano Takano, not Tanako. There we go, Takano. Um, you know by her diary that she believes that they used a sort of device that kind of kept um, them floating for a while, then eventually sink them after whatever, whatever the ritual period was. So, yes, you definitely would have to weigh it down. I mean, I don't know, in a really murky swamp, I feel like it'd be hard for a human to, um, float but you never know, right? I mean, I wouldn't know. <laughs> Oops. It was why using fairly heavy objects to hold people down didn't work. Come to think of it, with the curse the year before last, Rita Chen's mother drowned herself in the swamp, and the criminal behind the dismemberment that went missing the year of the first curse too, it was rumored he tried to discard the body in the swamp and accidentally drowned in it. I never heard of the corpse coming back up or them finding it, then shouldn't I choose to destroy, destroy the corpse there too? Well, no, because maybe they didn't actually do that. <laughs> it's just what people are saying or assuming. I could destroy the weapon there. And then, for example, if her uncle came out on a motorcycle and attacked, it would be convenient to get rid of the bike too. <laughs> I knew that Satoko's uncle generally used a motorcycle for transportation. Well, if he's getting on a motorcycle and attacking you, then you probably failed your mission. Because you do want... You don't want it to get that far into it, right? But as for the corpse... After a lot of worrying, I decided not to discard the corpse in the swamp. The drowning, suicide, and accidents were both rumors. Nobody knew if they actually happened. Yes, yes, yes. I agree. Smart. This is the awakened Keiichi. He is on a level beyond. <laughs> there, there were no lack of false rumors about the drowning suicide anyway, and it was possible the murder hadn't drowned there and was still on the run. That meant no one had ever confirmed the corpse being dropped in there and then not coming back up. Then what do I do with the body? I thought it might be interesting to go with the first incident, cut him into pieces, and hide him, but the preparation and the work for dismembering a human body would be difficult given the amount of time I had, and it might be physically hard. I mean, yeah, but you know, actually seeing his guts and stuff might waver Keiichi a bit. With that out of the question, I arrived at the conclusion to go with the more orthodox method of burying the body. Okay, so he's just burying it. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Was there even a better way of not slitting the the drowning? I mean, you couldn't really burn it or um, use the acid stuff because obviously you can't just buy it. So, yeah, made sense. And where would I bury it? Was a question related to where I would kill him. 
Of course, I wanted to keep my time in proximity to the body at a minimum. With that in mind, I would want to dig the hole dump the body bef in beforehand, make the location of the act and the hole close together. That's smart. Obviously, you can't just drag the body around. So, so the fact that he would... I don't know why. So, Satoko is probably not going to witness it anyways if he somehow... So, he has to bait him into into a place, then kill him. I mean, you can probably bait him by saying that Satoko is asking for him or something, or she got in trouble. And he would probably just take the bait and, like, scold her, act like a proper guardian or whatever. And then he can just... I think... You... I don't know. Because you obviously want to get him away from... You don't want him to be in the direction of the Furu's Shrine where the festival is happening. Like, you probably don't want it at the dump, either. <laughs> Just, like, it might actually be a good place, because again, it's a small village, and I'm sure people aren't going to be scrounging around the dump for the body, but the only problem is what if Rena finds it on her treasure hunting thing? So, I don't know. I feel like you can just, like, you can plan the route. It depends what you bait them with, but you bait them, you choose a location to bait them, then you plan the route. It can literally just be at the side of the road or something and dig a hole and just whack him while you're walking together or whatever. Or he's walking through. It's my initial idea, but let's see what Kichi has in mind. The choice of where to plan the crime, that I needed to be absolutely careful and thorough with. It had to be somewhere nobody would witness, and a place with hiding places for a sneak attack. Okay, so I guess he doesn't want to walk with them. And I guess roads might lead to- I guess people are driving in, huh, so... I feel like he's gonna choose the dump, I don't know why. And it's gonna leave conflict with Reno randomly. So we'll see. That's my prediction. I could dig a hole for the body right there. I go over the possibilities. Yeah, I mean, I guess he has to. Um, did the hole so people don't find it suspicious. So it can't really be populated too much. I go over the possibilities in my head of the various destinations her uncle would head to from Satoko's house. I imagined a map of the area in my head, and then I found a place that fulfilled those conditions so easily, it was almost unbelievable. A bit of a back road that went through the woods. Okay, so in the forest. That, I mean, that made the most sense, right? Just digging randomly in a forest. It's probably the least suspicious you can get. I didn't think Toronto would go deeper into the mountains of Yeduchi on a whim. If he was going somewhere, he passed through these woods first. And nobody used this bad way unless they had something to do at Satoko's house or one or two other places. This path was fantastically ideal, as few people used it. I would wait for him in these woods. Would an ambush actually be possible? I went into the trees and tried really hiding myself in a few places. It was extremely quiet. My senses to be sharpened here to their maximum amount. I didn't know when he'd come, but I'd wait right here for Satoko's uncle. I actually had some trouble coming to that decision. The question arose of whether I should somehow call the man out. Yeah. How do you bait him? Is the question. You can't really- I mean, you could try to leave a note, but like... Like, my idea was Kichi just runs and says, Oh, Satoko needs something, or somebody's asking for you, but that might be risky to you. And if you leave a note, then if someone gets a note before Kichi can clean it up, it's also evidence, so it's kind of hard. That man made Satoko do all the shopping and errands. He seldom left on his own business. He wouldn't leave, unless I worked out a plan to force him to, would he? That was the question. Tomorrow was the Watanagashi Festival. Would he go out for the festival, or would he stay inside? If he stayed inside, how would I drag him out of his house? That's right. 
Wouldn't he make Tsutoku go to the festival? Tsutoku would go to the festival. Meanwhile, I would call the man. This was, this is the Okonomiya police station. Well, let's see how deep a voice you can do, KG, cause <laughs> he might get suspicious a boy is, or a police officer has the voice of a boy. <laughs> we have the young lady from your house. Could you come and pick her up immediately? You didn't even have to be the police. This is the clinic. The young lady from your house has been injured. Please come and pick her up. Yes, that would work too. Yeah, police is probably not the best one. If I claimed to be the police or the hospital, told him to come and then hung up on him, he'd rush trying to figure out what was going on, wouldn't he? And just the other day, he was visited by a probation officer. He wouldn't suddenly grumble about having to get his niece and not go. It would look like child neglect. The man had no skills useful around the house. Satoko, his slave, was an essential part of his daily life. Conclusion? If he went out to the festival, I would attack him here on his way there or back. If he didn't, I would lure him out up by the phone. If luring him out by the phone was my first step, I needed to be sure Satoko would go to the festival, leaving the house. It would be convenient if I could make Mion take Satoko to the festival. She said her aunt was a was a district welfare officer. In other words, an ally to the probation officer. If I somehow incited Mion to take Satoko to the festival with her, while well, being who she was, she'd use the fat to get her there. Satoko should just take a break and have fun at the festival with everyone. She should have a good time, reminisce on our formal, peaceful days, and when she went home, everything would be over. Yeah, that would be the best outcome. With that decided, I need to—I needed to dig a hole somewhere in the woods to hide the body, so it wouldn't stand out, so it wouldn't be found. Someplace nobody would see me while I was completely it's exposed as I buried the corpse. I had wanted it to be close to the scene of the crime, but it naturally drew farther away. Yeah, naturally. New background? It's a nice background. <laughs> Deep in the bosom of the black forest, the voices of the Hidarashi were the only sounds here, informing me that people shouldn't indiscreetly set foot in this place. Oof. Digging a hole with so many tree roots crawling around the ground would be more far difficult than I envisioned. And it has to be a really... Like, digging a hole for a body is a lot of work, right? It's a pretty big hole. And I'm guessing this guy is pretty. They made him sound like he was kind of a big guy. I snuck a guardian spade out here in my bed, but that wouldn't be enough. Still, as I looked into various approaches, I managed to find a place I could dig into. Tomorrow, I'd bring a real shovel from the storeroom at home. And manage with that. I wondered how big a hole would have to fit a human all the way into it. I'd probably have to dig pretty deep down. But if I was slipshod in these efforts, I'd let a beginning occur. I absolutely couldn't allow that. Use any amount of time you need to. I mustn't spare any effort to utterly erase him. I glanced at my wristwatch. It was a little past it. This was probably all I was gonna get done here for today. I really wanted to do the, the hole in advance tonight even if it got dark out, but mom would be upset if I stayed out late. I mean, you could try to sneak out at night. Cause it's gonna be hard to dig the body, or dig the hole. It's probably gonna take a lot of his stamina too. It wouldn't be good to come off as suspicious to my parents. I needed to go back home and give Mion a call soon. I needed to get her to promise Satoko. <laughs> I needed to promise Satoko to take her by tonight. I needed to get her to promise Satoko to take her by tonight. That does not sound right. Could be wrong. After that, today would be done. Done. Would it be though? Was this really everything I could do to prepare right now? I decided where to kill him. I decided how to kill him. I decided, of course, how to dispose of the body. I didn't decide on a time, but I would play that by ear. I didn't have a way to go. 
I didn't have a way to decide that. Was that really all? Is he missing anything? I guess, like, forming an alibi might be a good idea. Have me on cover for him, or after he does it and he goes to the festival, kind of make a good excuse to why he was late would also be pretty helpful. Was this really alright? Have I overlooked anything? Was this really... Would this really go how I planned? After all this, worry started welling up one after another. It was only natural I'd be anxious. This would be the first and last big job of my lifetime. I did not allow failure. And I had no experience as this was my first time. I didn't have to know, I didn't have the know-how, the knack. So it was only natural I'd be anxious. The dark clouds of unease told me to doing nothing would be the easiest way, a truly pathetic suggestion this late in the game. Have you forgotten how miserable Satoko looked? From the outside, it may have looked like I was resolute, but deep in my heart, my knees were shaking loudly. I've never actually won a pseudo fight to my satisfaction. Could I really kill someone? I may have been planning an ambush, but my enemy was large and far older than me. He had a scary face, and he looked like he was, well, accustomed to fighting. Could I have... All the pieces before me and after the murder were perfectly planned. But was the actual murder the most important part what unsettled me the most? All my preparations, all my perfectly concealed machinations, if I didn't successfully murder him, they amounted to nothing. Damn it. After coming this far, you're pathetic, Keiichi Maibara. If you start to have these kinds of second thoughts, your ulterior motive will be obvious. Let's go home. Go home and calm your mind. Tomorrow will be a juncture in your life, the lights of which graduation, employment, marriage, and childbirth, childbirth couldn't hold a candle to. A day of murder. To kill someone. For someone else's sake. With that day behind us, we would take it back again. Those mild, spring-light days we never thought would stop. Those safe, peaceful, fun times. I pedaled my bicycle hard to get back home. I felt somehow unsteady, like my body and soul weren't in alignment. A subtle shift between where the tips of my hands and feet really were and where I felt them to be. My vision was a little distant and narrow, as if the greater barrier I risked my future life on had nothing to do with me. An unreal sensation. How could I put it? Everything was so far away. Fine. Feel your unease permeate you, Teiji Maibara. If if that will turn your timidity, timidity into <laughs> what are these words? Awaken Keiichi is using big words that even I don't know. Not that I'm super smart with words, but I feel like a 15 year old probably wouldn't know this. Meta cool. Med. Meticulously. Meticulously. Meti oh, I'm, I'm dumb. Okay, I know. Ah, I just couldn't pronounce it. Obviously, we know what meticulously means. God damn it. Now I look like a fool. <laughs> Meticulousness. There we go. And allow you to act with greater caution. Though I still don't think a 15 year old would use meticulous. Then, or maybe back then. Then it's actually an important emotion to feel. This feeling I had never went away that night. Night cut. It was the first time I'd be calling Mion's house. I searched for her in the phone book the school gave me, then dialed a short phone number, the kind of unique to remote places. It was around dinner time. It's already night time. Uh, I guess I don't know what time Keiichi eats his dinner. <laughs> she would probably be home. But just as I started to think no one would respond, someone finally picked up the receiver. Hi, 
Why is Keiichi's voice muffled? Wouldn't Keiichi's voice be normal if we're listening through his perspective? <laughs> it's a weird way of doing it. The fact that Mion doesn't recognize the voice is kind of concerning. I mean, it could be she. Why would it be Shion? It makes no sense. Whatever. Let's let let's let's let it slide for a bit. You know, it's hard to trust phone calls after the last start, right? What's up? <laughs> she seemed to be in a weirdly good mood, and she drew drew her syllables out. Right. It's the night before the tomorrow's festival, so she's probably with her family having some drinks. I don't know why they did this. The voice like this. It's a little so I, they didn't do that before. <laughs> don't uh I heard her draw in small breath on the other end. Satoko The scent of sake had completely disappeared from her voice. Why does it feel like she's not Mion? She's giving out general statements. Oh no. To be fair, he guys didn't really do anything. I don't know if you tried your hardest. So, this conversation's weird. What if this is like some sort of weird... Like, what if this is like... A Satoshi talking to someone else? I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I think, I think they're doing this on purpose. This is just a weird conversation. It's also being like very vague. So this could have been like a... Secretly like... Doing like almost a throwback to um, like what if Satoshi and like Shion were talking about this thing? Anyways, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's more far fetched. It's probably more believable that Keiichi's doing it. I mean. Last year when the ant died, I'm sure Satoko went to um the festival then came back to so similarities. Yeah, I think I was thinking too far. So Tichi's definitely talking to someone on the phone. It still could be a fade, but I don't know if I don't know what I was trying to go for the other far out theory. どうしてどうしてって、せめて祭りの夜くらい、息抜きさせてやりたいじゃないか。たとえ一夜でも、あの意地悪なおじの元から離れられるなら、短い時間でもきっとさとこは喜ぶ。だから、どうしてああ、she
Nian took a long time to give her a reply. I got the feeling that Nian had been acting weird for a while. That she was flustered by emotions or something. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Was that a sob? Neon, are you crying? What? <laughs> what, what? What is that response? It's just one night. What? Mian, what was she talking about? I don't know what she's talking about either. Bro, this is Xion. This is Xion. Okay. Easy, easy. God, I'm so good at this. So this is probably... <laughs> Dude, holy shit, I'm so brain... I, I have big brain right now, so... I, I could see they are trying... It was kind of framed in a way that it could have been something that Toshi would have done. And this was Xion pretending to be Mion for whatever reason. So I guess they do visit each other more often or whatever. And um, obviously Xion's getting like some PTSD flashbacks. And this is probably similar to um, to what Satoshi said to her. Which pretty much confirms that Satoshi was probably the one who killed the ant. God, I'm good. <laughs> Hello, Xion. Why is Xion at Mian's house? I guess because they're having a meeting? That's also true. Xion hasn't even interacted with Satoko. I had no idea what to say to that. Mian was clearly now talking to someone other than me. I didn't know who. All I could do was listen to her in a day. That, yeah, I, I think I 100% understand this. Satoshi. And rem reminder that uh, see that's why that's what I meant that it, it doesn't have to be Teichi because of how the voice is portrayed. God, <laughs> literacy genius. My idol has been boosted, and also it's a reminder that um in a hint I think it was that it showed um at least the coach said that Xion and um, Satoshi had some sort of romantic relationships. When I said her name, whatever spell me uh, was on Mian was released. Uh, <laughs> Why is she on? Oh, man. It's okay. We can think about it later. I have a couple of ideas. <laughs> Mian didn't answer. All I could hear were sobs coming through the receiver. Okay, Shion. I mean, it's a hundred percent Shion right now, not Mian. It literally would make no sense if it was um Mian, because it doesn't even like work because you know Mian's been playing with Sat Satoko the whole time. <laughs> Why is she role playing as Mion right now? It makes, I, is it mischievous or is there like a bitter reason to why Shion would be? Uh, honestly, I could just make a whole video theorizing about the Sonozaki sisters at that point because I have so many like possible things. It's like the most interesting thing to theorize right now on, but I don't know if I would actually do that. <laughs> Did I skip lines? Sorry. I had no idea how it happened, but I was pretty sure last year, on this very day, Satoshi had called me on. She on. 
and told her to bring Satoru to the festival. And when she asked why he needed her to do it, he replied the same way I just did. And obviously this connects to um Inanna Katushi when people were saying that Teichi was acting just like Satoshi. It's possible that Teichi was also just acting just like Satoshi in this one where he even came up with a similar plan maybe. I didn't expect this. Satoshi had given her the dead same phone call one year ago. Mian kept going after that. That I, that he was lying. That he told her it would only be for the night of the festival. Disappeared might have been a rather vague way to put it. Whether he ran away or not, Satoshi left, abandoning Satoko. And then, an idea for a more indistinct than even fog. Idea far more indistinct than even fog crossed my mind. Satoshi made the exact same phone call as me last year. Why would Satoshi make the exact same phone call? Oh, I guess Keiichi might think of... I did question earlier in this session if Keiichi would even think that Satoshi might have been the one to murder. They're bringing it up too. I'm on a roll today. And if in the true sense he really made the exact same phone call as I right now, then the incident where their aunt was beaten to death, that's... could it? Last year, Satoru had been constantly abused by her uncle's wife, their aunt too. Her aunt abused her the most, and on that night, in the name of Oyashiro Sama's curse, she was taken from this world. If I thought about that, everything made perfect sense, didn't it? No, but that would mean... But then Satoshi, he was a coward who abandoned Satoshi and ran away, wasn't he? How could Satoshi resolve himself to kill a person to save Satoko? It was unthinkable. A few days later, he disappeared. On Satoko's birthday. <laughs> Just an extra slap in the face. When I first heard it, I flew into a rage. What a cruel day to have run away on. But, now that I thought about it like this, the story changed completely. Satoshi had probably been less calm than I was now. He was her big brother, related by blood, watching his little sister be abused day in and day out. Maybe that's why he couldn't keep calm. And that's why the corpse of their aunt beaten to death was so easily discovered. Satoshi lost himself in his anger and hadn't hidden the corpse. He permitted a beginning to occur. If the police conducted a full-blown investigation, it would be easy to imagine they wouldn't take long to pin down Satoshi as the culprit. Satoshi, he wished for a return to the peaceful days with Satoko, and though he achieved it for a while, he had been suddenly driven into a corner. And then he wanted to at least hold out until Satoru's birthday, but finally they nailed him. I don't think so. I mean, maybe, but like, how did the... Why was someone else accused of the murder then? At the time, Satoshi had been carrying the savings he amassed to buy Satoru's giant stuffed animal for a birthday present. He would buy the stuffed animal as a gift and then caught, get caught. Or he would use the money and disappear, that was the choice he had been forced to make. And he decided not to make Satoko the sister of a murderer. If that was the case, then it must have been an unspeakably bitter decision. I like the idea, but I don't think it's exactly like this. 
feels weird. All the money he'd saved wanted to see Satoko happy, he had to use it to make her sad. And he used the savings, and disappeared, to Tokyo if the rumors were true. Uishi. Had he been slowly driven into a corner by that repulsive man's pig-headed pursuit? Mm, that was right. The deviant had confessed and the incident was solved. You can't just arbitrarily decide like that. You never know where or how humans are tied together. If that guy took the blame, then it was the perfect crime. Of course, if it really was a perfect crime, there would be no reason for Satoshi to vanish. これは誰に言っても信じてくれないんだけど、佐都子のために買うと言ってたぬいぐるみが売れて証券室からなくなってたの。きっと佐都子が買ったに違いない。ちょっと待てよ。逃走資金に使わないでぬいぐるみを買う
サトシと同じようにバカだから俺はサトシじゃないって言ってるだろううんそんなのは分かってるよ I deflected her with a response that wasn't really an answer. Beyond didn't help me anymore after that. Do you think that Satoshi Kun is the same as 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 I storm you for a coward who ran away abandoning his sister. I always thought you didn't have the right to call yourself her Nini, but now I didn't know what to think. Oh, yeah, s h o w s h o w much curse on the fourth year, their aunt's death, and Satoshi's disappearance. And now, me trying to tear you out, oh, yeah, s h o w s h o w much curse on the fifth. Oddly enough, what I was going to do overlapped perfectly with Satoshi the day before the curse. No, that wasn't all. If we start back from Satoko being abused, and I'd been overlapping with Satoshi for days already. When I talked to Mian before, she asked me if I was Satoshi. Yo. <laughs> the meme theory? Is it real? I, I really don't think it's real, but it's good to have them. <laughs> oh, oh. It, it's an addition to the clone theory. What if Keiichi's a clone of Satoshi? There you go. <laughs> If, if that was the first impression a third party like Mion got, then it was probably true. Then, as Satoshi had accomplished, I would succeed in the murder. But that was the extent to which we overlapped. I was far calm, calmer than Satoshi and more calculating. I could actually grow calmer and more enthusiastic I became. The more enthusiastic I became. Yes, Satoshi couldn't awaken and transcend like Keiichi. It's a completely different ballgame. That's why I wouldn't follow in Satoshi's footsteps. I would snip him cleanly out of the world, then get our peaceful life back. Maybe Satoshi had been with me ever since I chose to use Satoshi's bat as my weapon. No, maybe even longer than that. When I decided I'd be our Nini, maybe Satoshi had been residing within me then too. Satoshi, were you really a coward? Or are you a true Nini even now, the kind worthy of Satoko's love? I never met him, never spoke to him, didn't even know his face, and yet I felt so connected to him. I never felt that way before. <laughs> Chapter and. Ooh, it's already almost an hour. We can wrap it up with the clues. Or the hints, not the clues. That was a good, good sesh. Finally, getting to the Watch and Dashi next one. Ooh, it's only one, too. No on the housewife murder case. Alright, what is the note? For the attention of those on the housewife slaughter incident case. July blank, 1982. Autonomia Police Station, 1st Investigative Division. Chief Taka Takasugi. Prefecture Police Headquarters for Eradication of Drug Related Crime. Shishibon branch head, blank blank. Regarding incident blank, designated as undercover investigation. This message is to inform you that a section of the testimony records of an incident under this police headquarters jurisdiction has been found. That is, that is thought to be related to the undercover investigation of the incident in question. During an investigation of the suspect who was arrested for possession of illegal drugs, there was a testimony related to the crime in question, and as part of it, we learned that the criminal had information only he could have known. Therefore, this record of testimony duplicate attached will be provided to you. If this testimonial is to be believed, then there's an extremely high chance that the suspect was the culprit behind the incident in question. In addition, the head investigator on the case received this report and inquired as to the incident with the Autonomia police station. But the responsible party at the Autonomia station, who responded to the designated undercover investigation announced by Prefectural Police General De Director on July 1st, misunderstood and did not explain the incident's existence to the head investigator on the case properly. 
Because of this, the case's head investigator was not aware of the importance of the testimony as it related to the case in question. And as a result, was negligent. Ned, you know what that word is. I know what it is. I just can't say it right now. When combing the scene, we apologize for having left it in the dark until now. In addition, there is a post strip stating that the suspect blank blank died while in confinement yesterday. And we don't get this transcript of the evidence. That was a weird one. Maybe I'm just tired of reading, but I didn't fully understand what they were saying. Are they trying to say that there's another case tied into this murder? Which, I mean, obviously that the thing you would immediately go to would be, um, let's get out of here. Um, would immediately be um, the curse murders, but there's they said they were the drug, the drug crime thing. So maybe it's a different case that it was tied to. It's kind of vague. I'll probably reread it later. But thank you for watching. It's been an hour. Hopefully you enjoyed, and um, you'll get an episode like either tomorrow. Since I'm up uploading this Friday, you'll either get. Another episode Saturday or Sunday since again I missed last week's video. So enjoy. Next time we actually get the Watanagashi and hopefully Keichi can kill the guy. <laughs> we can only hope. Bye for now.